and this brilliant this brilliant presentation will make it even easier for me to recapitulate instead the future directions for treatment of metastatic triple negative breast cancer. These are my disclosures. And in general, I would like to start from the past and from very past, meaning about a uh, hundred years ago, when the idea of targeting mm, disease cells, mm, tumor cells with something that could be specific for them and could instead spare healthy tissues was kind of theorized by Paul Ehrlich. And, and then 100 years later, we actually had the first antibody drug conjugates approved for treating breast cancer. And that was Tetsila or TDM1 that is approved for HER2 positive breast cancer. But re recently, as we have seen presented by Dr. Garrido Castro, we have seen ADCs expanding also to other subtypes of breast cancer, like triple negative. And, and in particular, we have seen since ASCO uh, 20, uh, 2018 and 2019, some of these agents to really show impressive activity. And you will see this graph, this kind of graph in several slides. And these what we call waterfall plots, because of course they do like look like waterfalls. And in general, every line going down is actually a shrinkage of uh, the tumor of a patient. And so we do like when there's many lines going down. And in these cases, we had on the left, trastuzumab the rusican, there is a HER2 targeted ADC. And on the right, trastuzumab the carmazine, there is also a HER2 targeted ADC. And the belief was that in, back in 2018, these, these agents could only be effective in those 15 to 20% of patients with HER2 positive breast cancer. But actually, these waterfall plots here are seen among patients with HER2 negative disease. Actually, what we say was we call HER2 low. So in general, this was kind of thought provoking and led to the identification of this new entity of HER2 low breast cancer, a targetable entity within breast cancers. And when we looked at our data sets, we found that about 40% of all triple negative breast cancers can be defined HER2 low. And if you look at other studies, this number can change. In general, it's between 40 to 50%. And also it can change if you think about any biopsy in time, because if you collect only one biopsy uh, of, the metas of a metastasis, you have 40 to 50% likelihood that that will be HER2 low. But if you combine that with the score from many other biopsies or from the primary tumor, what you actually find is that the likelihood of having at least one biopsy in all of your store history to be HER2 low, it's much higher. It's closer to 100%. And so actually the proportion of patients with triple negative breast cancer that may be eligible for these HER2 targeted ADCs is very substantial. And why are these new antibody drug conjugates so more effective compared to, for instance, Kate Tyler? A few reasons that we're starting to realize. First of all, because they have more chemotherapy attached to each antibody. And so Kate Tyler had about 3.5 molecules for each antibody. Here with several of these novel ADCs, we have up to eight molecules of chemotherapy linked to each antibody. And so, each compound, each antibody delivers a lot of chemotherapy to the tumor, and also it delivers it in a way that it can also detach and can also um, re reach tumor cells that express less HER2 or do not express HER2, or in general, do not express the target. And so it has a much broader activity, regardless of the expression of the target, what we call bystander effect. And then we always created this kind of antibody drug conjugates with microtubule inhibitors, but now we're starting to use novel chemotherapies. And so to link mm, topoisomerase inhibitors, then in general, chemotherapies that work in a different way. And this led to the impressive results that we saw at Destiny Breast 04, presented by Dr. Garrido Castro, that were presented last year at ASCO and prompted a standing ovation. But actually it led also to the design of many, many other clinical trials. And in particular, many phase three trials that are looking at bringing these antibody drug conjugates earlier in the treatment paradigm, either in first line for metastatic triple negative breast cancer, but also in the adjuvant setting or neoadjuvant setting in order to prevent recurrence. And one agent uh, that is somehow similar to drastuzumab deruxican, but at the same time different is daropotamab deruxican. And this is an antibody drug conjugate that targets TROP2, similar to Statitusnagovitikan, another agent that Dr. Garrido Castro has presented. And in this, uh, this ADC has got um, uh, an antibody that targets TROP2, that is highly expressed on most of triple negative breast cancers. More than 80% of all triple negative breast cancers have TROP2 on their membrane. 
and it delivers the same chemotherapy than TDXT, although there are four molecules instead than eight. And when this was tested among patients with triple negative, metastatic triple negative breast cancer that had already received several prior treatments, so heavily treated patients, we actually saw a promising waterfall plot. Most of the patients experienced a shrinkage of the disease. Um, more than 30% uh, achieved what we call uh, a an objective response, meaning more than 30% shrinkage. That is kind of a threshold that we made up. But in general, it seems like most of the patients derived some benefits from this drug. And the main side effect that was observed with this drug was stomatitis, so an inflammation uh, of the mouth generally, and some nausea. But in general, we are learning also to manage the side effects of this agent that is being tested in a large phase three trial that is looking at if this antibody drug conjugate, daropotamab, the rosecan, dato DXD, can be more effective than traditional chemotherapy in the first line setting for patients with metastatic triple negative. Because most patients with metastatic triple negative breast cancer have pdl one negative disease. They do not receive immunotherapy. They just receive chemotherapy. That can be taxanes, platinum. But this trial is looking at seeing if a targeted chemotherapy can be more effective than traditional chemotherapy. And similarly, the other TROP2 targeted conjugates that we discussed, Persituzumab govitecan, is also being tested in the first line setting, either with immunotherapy, with pembrolizumab, that is the, what we call the ASCENT 03 trial, or without uh, immunotherapy as well. And, and in general, what we might see in the future, here we have a schematic representation of how we treat metastatic triple negative breast cancer. So, you see on the left, first line, chemotherapy with or without pembrolizumab. And then from the second and third line, we have the conjugates, sasituzumab govitecan, TDXD, and later on other chemotherapies. But what we may see based on these trials that are ongoing is that actually these novel conjugates may reach the first line setting with or without immunotherapy. And we hope that this leads to improved long-term outcomes, improved survival. And so utilizing the best drug earlier may actually lead to improved outcomes in the long run. Of course, this has to be proven, has to be demonstrated in the phase three trials that are ongoing. But I would say that we are optimistic just because we saw how much more effective these agents were compared to traditional chemotherapy in later line settings. And then what other target on your right? We, we spoke a lot about HER2. We spoke a lot about TROP2, but actually there's so much more because we're just realizing that, of course, on tumor cells, there's a lot of different antigens and we can potentially target many of them. And some of them are more suitable because the cancer cell depends on those. And so it's very hard for the cancer cells to hide these antigens. Some of, of them instead are less suitable and we're discarding them. But one that it seems pretty promising is HER3. And what you can see with HER3 is that we know that it's part of the, uh, the same family than HER2. And also it can dimerize, we say. It can join HER2 in order to make the activation of HER2 more potent. And so it has a strong biologic, a rational bi biologic role for breast cancer. And at the same time, it's highly expressed in most, more than 95% of breast cancer. And so with this uh, chemotherapy, DXD, we also linked it to another antibody that targets HER3, what we call patritumab, the second, or HER3 DXD, by producing this conjugate that can deliver DXD to tumor cells that express HER3. And the data was presented at ASCO very recently and showed that among patients with HER2 negative disease, either hormone receptor positive or triple negative metastatic breast cancer, most of the patients, once again, had a shrinkage of disease. Most of the many patients had a response of disease. And on the, on the right, you can see another plot that we call spider plot. And you can see that if it goes down, it means that there is a shrinkage. And it, if it keeps going down or it goes toward the left, it, toward the right, sorry, it means that the, the response is durable. And so we do like when the lines go down, remain down and keep on going on because it means those are responses and are maintained in time. And this is what was observed with our 3 dxd And beyond this, so we, um, we reviewed how we moved from TDM1, kind of the standard conjugate as we think of it, 
to this next generation of ADCs that we are utilizing right now. So that is between the present and the future because it's still been uh, studied, but at the same time, there's future conjugates that we're also looking at. And so we're looking at, instead of using normal uh, antibodies to target the, um, the antigens on the tumor cell, using bispecific antibodies that can bind to different antigens, to different parts of the cell, or to mask them, to put a mask that only detaches close to the tumor so that they become even more specific at delivering chemotherapy only to the tumor. And also we are, we are trying to understand if utilizing different payloads, for instance, instead of delivering chemotherapy, these conjugates may be able to deliver immunotherapy or targeted therapy or even radionuclides. And finally, we're trying to understand if we can modulate the stability of these agents by modulating the linker. In general, there is an entire wave of new conjugates coming, but we still we are still refining the way we use them because right now we don't really think so much about the expression on the cell. We mostly look at the trials that are being conducted to decide which conjugate to use. But as Dr. Garrido Castro was mentioning, we are developing better ways to look at the antigen, the, the, the antigen, the targets. And so what we hope is that in the future we can better understand what targets are expressed on each tri triple negative breast cancer. And so instead of just looking at estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, and HER2, we can also look at nectin for expression, HER3 expression, HER2 expression, TROP2, LIV1. And of course, we have to demonstrate that this is helpful, but there is some kind of thought that this could be helpful in the future, although not yet right now. So please, don't ask your oncologist what is the expression of nectin for of your tumor because it's not something we do in clinical practice. It's something completely experimental, but that may have a role hopefully in the future. Of course, beyond the activity that these conjugates have, they can also have toxicities. And many of the side effects of these conjugates can resemble chemotherapy because they are still targeted, but they're still chemotherapy. And, and we are optimizing, we are working hard to optimize the management and also to, to make better conjugates in order to make them more, more effective and also more tolerable. And one thing that we are doing a lot, and it's the point A on this figure, is those optimization strategies. And usually there are several strategies, but what we think often is to do randomized studies where we check different doses of a certain antibody drug conjugate and see what is the different efficacy and toxicity of different doses. And what we see is that many times we see the same activity and better tolerability with lower doses of the antibody drug conjugate. So there is an ongoing work also with the help of regulatory authorities like FDA to try to really optimize the use of these conjugates to keep their activity, but also to make them as tolerable as possible. And this is just one of the many strategies that are being pursued. And beyond antibody drug conjugates, we, this is definitely an exciting area, but also immunotherapy is extremely promising because we know that immunotherapy works in a very different way. Instead of trying to kill the tumor, it tries to empower the immune system in order to indirectly um, kill the tumor cells. And what we saw is that in the last decade or so, there really was a boom in oncology of immunotherapy. And in many, many different cancer types, immunotherapy is now have a role. And and in general, what we are doing in breast cancer, what we saw is that immunotherapy alone for with the agents that we have right now may really not be the way the way ahead. It's just not as effective as something combinations can be. And this is where we're starting to understand that some combinations with other agents can have a strong rationale and can make immunotherapy more effective. And this is a complex graph just showing how many targeted therapies and different strategies are being tested in combination with immunotherapy to make immunotherapy work better. But three of them that I feel have a strong, very strong rationale are, of course, ADCs, antibody drug conjugates, just because as we saw, they, they could turn a cold tumor into hot, meaning a tumor with poor immune infiltration into more immune inflamed and can make immunotherapy um, work better, but also novel immunotherapies, double immunotherapies, for instance, or what we call PARP inhibitors. There are some kind of drugs that we used to use uh, in the past only for patients with um, BRCA mutations, some mutations that predispose to breast cancer, but we are learning that they may ever go beyond that. And so talking 
you know, uh, antibody drug conjugates, I'll try to be brief on this. We already saw this agent, Dato DXT, that are put on the when immunotherapy was added to it, the Ravalumab, and it was used early in the disease course. First line, we saw 79% objective response rate, meaning that almost 80% of all the patients with metastatic triple negative breast cancer with this combo had more than 30% shrinkage, which is quite remarkable for this subtype of disease. And the tolerability seemed kind of comparable to the Rapotam of the Rusican alone. And also, trastuzum of the Rusican was combined with Durvalumab in the same setting, in the same trial, a trial that we call Begonia. And also here, you can see most of the lines go down, meaning that there was a shrinkage of disease and a response of disease in most of the patients. It's, it's few patients that have received this combo, but a very promising combo. And other antibody drug conjugates, ladiratuzumab, vedotin, with immunotherapy, also showed promising activity. So in general, we saw that ADCs plus immunotherapy work very well, and it may be a future, at least for some patients with metastatic triple negative breast cancer. What about utilizing other immunotherapies beyond PD-1 inhibitors? Most of the immunotherapies we use target either PD-1 or PDL1, but there is actually an agent that is approved for other diseases called epilimumab that targets another immune target called CTLA-4. This actually was the first immunotherapy target to be validated. And in this trial called Nimbus that we conducted at Dana-Farber, we, we found that so some patients that have a high tumor mutational burden can derive deep and long lasting responses to this combo. Of course, the other side of the coin is that you can see that some lines go up in the waterfall plot, meaning that some patients don't, do not derive benefit from this combination, from immunotherapy alone. And this is why it's very important to keep studying what are the biomarkers, the reasons that make immunotherapy work so that we can try to identify the yellow lines, those patients that really experience the longest duration of response with these immunotherapies. And finally, PARP inhibitors. These are usually oral drugs that work very well for patients with BRCA mutations. And adding immunotherapy, it's still unclear if it can really enhance their activity, but there are some hints in some early trials. And so there are um, many, many trials ongoing to test the combination of several different PARP inhibitors with immunotherapy, either as treatment line or even maintenance to see if adding these PARP inhibitors to maintenance after chemotherapy can prolong the responses. So in general, uh, to, to recapitulate and to conclude, there are many antibody drug conjugates that, are, that have been recently approved, but many more that are being currently developed. And we see that several of them have already shown in phase one and two trials, impressive activity, very promising activity, either alone or when combined with other agents like immunotherapy. Beyond antibody drug conjugates, also PARP inhibitors or novel immunotherapies or other immunotherapies. In general, many, many combinations are being developed. And so in general, I feel that the, the arsenal of drugs to treat metastatic triple negative breast cancer may soon expand. At the same time, I feel that it's becoming more and more important since we have many new drugs to understand even better how they work, why they work, in which patients they work, so that we can find the best sequence for every patient. And at the same time, it, it's becoming crucial to really manage the side effects. And we are learning to manage this, but I feel that we are still learning and, and with increasing confidence and experience in time, we'll be able to fully exploit the, um, the activity of these drugs by making it also them more tolerable. Thank you very much. And with this, I would like to open the question and answer.